Hello there, everyone. I don't know when you're gonna see this because at the time of recording, I do not have internet, but Shorekeeper was leaked last night, and she's looking to be quite an interesting character with a lot of little tricks up her sleeve. So let's dive into her kit, shall we? And I'm sure you're all dying to know how good she really is. Let's start with her basic attacks. Whenever she hits enemies with her basic attack, she is going to spawn a collapsed core. Now, I'm going to explain what this is later when I talk about her forte circuit. Now, let's dive into the heavy attack, because this is going to be what she is going to be doing for a majority of the time. She is going to become a little cyan ball and fly around the battlefield and kind of just fuck around, not really do much. Because for every second that she is in this state, she is going to gain one point of speculative data. And then when you cancel this heavy attack, the speculative data becomes actual data. Now what the actual data is used for is, again, something I'm going to discuss in the Forte circuit. So just hold your horses here. Her skill is going to be very simple. She is going to heal the entire team based on her max HP, and she's going to spawn Dim Star Butterflies, which will automatically attack the target dealing Spectro damage. Now, these aren't going to be doing that much damage, but, you know, it's nice to have. I don't really know why they're there, but j j just let them, just let them. Now, for her Forte Circuit, this is going to be quite a yap fest, so, so stay with me here. The collapsed cores that I mentioned earlier during her basic attacks will become Flare Star Butterflies after 6 seconds of being spawned in. Now, essentially... That, that just means it's kind of like a backloaded coordinate attack, but not really, because that's what her enhanced heavy attack and her enhanced aerial attack are for. Now, the enhanced heavy attack will make it so that all the collapsed cores become flare star butterflies instantly, and it will also group up enemies. We don't really know the range of this yet, but considering our briefest experience with groupers in this game, I'm not going to be impressed until I see it. Now, as for the aerial attack, this does not have grouping, so there is very little reason to actually use this, you're just gonna stick with the heavy attack most of the time. Now, let's get on to her ultimate, because this seems to be the main meat of her kit. Because this is where her buffing is going to lie. After all, every good sustain in the gacha game is also a damage buffer, because it is still a fight against the clock. She is going to create a stellar realm, and it's going to upgrade whenever you use intro skills. So the longer your rotation goes on and the more you swap characters with your intro skills, the better it's going to become. At level 1, it's just going to heal your allies based on the shorekeeper's max HP. But after one intro skill, it will become a sophisticated stellar realm. And now what this does is it's going to buff your team's crit rates depending on shorekeeper's energy regen. You heard me right. Her buffing is based on ER. That's a very unique stat to buff based on, and I think it's a good decision. Now, for every 20% energy recharge, you will gain 1% crit rate. So, it caps out at 200% energy regen. And then when you do another intro skill, so a second one, you will get the released Stellar Realm. It will have all the effects of the sophisticated Stellar Realm, but it will also buff 2% attack, for every 20% crit rate, so up to 20% attack. This is what Verena provides, which means that Shorekeeper ultimately is going to have more buffing than Verena, which is very nice. Her intro skill is going to have two versions. First, a version without the ultimate, and then another version with. The version without the ultimate will just spawn five Dim Star Butterflies, which will automatically attack targets, which counts as resonance skill damage. Very simple, nothing to say here. Now, for the enhanced one, it's going to do damage based on the shorekeeper's max HP. At least I think, the writing is kind of annoying here. It's going to deal resonance liberation damage and it's guaranteed to crit. And it's also going to end the ultimate. This means that after you ult and you do your outro skill on shorekeeper, don't intro skill until your rotation's over, trust me. But this means that if it does really scale on max HP, it's going to be quite a big source of damage. 
So building her for HP and then Spectro damage might not be that bad of an idea. Especially if you're using an energy regen weapon, which means you'll reach the 200% even easier. Now, let's get into her outro skill, because this one is a lot of words to say very little things. So, it's going to spawn a Flare Star Butterfly and a Dim Star Butterfly. But what it really does is the Dim Star Butterfly will give you 15% damage amplification, just like Farina's outro skill. And the Flare Star Butterfly will essentially give you 5 free perfect dodges that you can consume whenever you are being attacked. So essentially, you will never really be in danger if you're using the Shorekeeper, as long as you don't entirely play like an absolute buffoon. Which means that Shorekeeper is going to be an incredibly safe character to use. And in nearly every scenario, she will be able to keep you alive quite easily. Her rotation is going to be quite long, however, considering you have to dick around in your heavy attack for 5 seconds, and then you still have to cancel it, use your ult and skill, and then do a heavy attack. I predict it will be around 7 to 8 seconds, which is a lot longer than Verena's. And speaking of Verena, that's going to be where the main comparison is. Her buffing is a lot stronger because she has 10% crit rates in her buffing repertoire as well, but her rotation lasts so much longer, is it even worth it? Well, for that we have to turn to her personal damage. This is why I recommend building Spectro damage and crit on her, because her personal damage is really the main way she's going to pull ahead of Verena here, because Verena's rotation is just so much shorter, and Shorekeeper has to compensate by having damage, which she actually does if you manage to get a good build on her. All of these comparisons are on the same weapon, being R5 variation. But what if you get Shorekeeper's signature weapon? Well, her signature weapon is essentially going to be variation 2, Electric Boogaloo. It's going to have an energy regen of 77% and increase max HP by 12%. Whenever you use your skill and it heals, it will give the Shorekeeper 8 energy. Verena cannot trigger this because her skill doesn't actually heal, but Baiji is capable of triggering this. And then, whenever the character uses their outro skill, it will make the entire team's attack increase by 10%. I would say it's not that impressive of a signature weapon, because variations still exist. But because it has a buff, this will make Shorekeeper even better than Verena, and I generally recommend getting it a lot more than her sequences. Speaking of which, her sequence 1 will make it so the range of her ultimate is significantly increased and its duration is also significantly increased. I feel both of these are kind of unnecessary, but it's good quality of life I guess. Her sequence 2 will make it so whenever the Flare Star Butterfly deals damage, the Shorekeeper heals herself based on her max HP, and whenever a Dim Star Butterfly hits, all the team members' damage will be increased. I'd say this is pretty good because it just makes her even more of a buffer. But I don't know if it's worth going for, because when at max stacks, it's only 15% damage bonus. Sequence 3 will make it so whenever the Stellar Realm is present, Shorekeeper gains 20 Concerto energy when a nearby team member does an intro skill, which can be triggered once every 25 seconds. That is a lot of Concerto energy, but I'm not sure if it will help Shorekeeper be able to make her rotations really that much shorter. This is because her enhanced heavy attack, which will be one of your better ways to get Concerto energy on her, also immediately creates the Flare Star Butterflies from the collapsed cores. So I'm not entirely sure if you want to skip out on that, especially since it also has grouping. Her sequence 4 will make it so whenever you use her outro skill, the entire team gains 10% extra amplified damage, which is a very raw multiplier. But Keep in mind, it's an S4, like, come on guys, let's be serious here. S5 will make it so the effective range of basic attack stage 3, and the heavy attack deduction is extended by 30%. And I think this is pretty useful, but it's only really quality of life, and it's on S5, so I do not recommend getting this either. And then for S6, when casting the intro skill thus proved, the Chain Intra Skill Discernment Multiplier is increased by 42%. And Discernment is the HP scaling version of her Intra Skill, so this is the one that's going to be doing a bunch of damage. 
It also makes it so whenever you use discernment, the shorekeeper's crit damage is increased by 200%. And considering the fact that it's a guaranteed crit, I'd say this is very good for shorekeeper's personal damage. But her personal damage really is not that relevant, and you really are just looking at her for her buffs. So I'm not really sure what the purpose is of this. Overall, I think Shorekeeper is going to be a very strong character, and she is going to be replacing Verena in a lot of people's teams. Even if she doesn't replace Verena, the fact that she is a third healer alongside Baija and Verena already makes her a very strong pull for your account, and I recommend everyone get her. Unless you are somehow able to use a team without a sustain, and then she becomes less necessary. But, in my opinion, it's still worth it because then she can be used instead of Baija, and I'd say that's a pretty significant upgrade. But what do you guys think about the Shorekeeper? I'm personally very excited, and I might be going for her S2. I'm not entirely sure though. But that'll be all from me. Peace.